What's up awesome people? My name is Mitchell R. Tucker. Thank you so much for clicking the video. Before we get started, if you would, please subscribe and hit that thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. So I know that the lighting isn't perfect and this isn't the best uh, audio that you're going to hear on my channel, but I had a thought come to mind, a story I wanted to share with you. And I didn't want to wait until I was in my office in the perfect lighting condition. Plus, I feel like this is more authentic. You're catching me at work and I'm sharing a war story. As most of you know, I am a reserve police officer. I used to be full time. I now uh, do reserve, so I work two days a month. And um, it keeps my cert active and it allows me to do what I love because I, I really do enjoy law enforcement. I enjoy, I enjoy what I do and what it stands for. So the story I want to share with you was when I was a new deputy. I had maybe two years at the very most under my belt, and I received a call in a town called Romeo, out in the middle of absolutely nowhere. And uh, the information in the call was very vague. They said uh, Spanish speaking, and multiple people involved in an altercation. That's the only information I had. So when you're heading to a call like that, by yourself it's a little bit uneasy like you, you have no idea what you're getting into I slide into their dirt drive and there's a Spanish lady and she's waving me to waving me inside of her house she's standing by the front door waving me in I jump out of my squad car and I run up and um, I run inside the front door around the corner and these two Spanish guys laying on the floor one guy about my size and one guy about three times my size. And then the bigger guys laying on top of the smaller guy. They're both covered in sweat, screaming and cursing at each other. And uh, the bigger Spanish guy makes eye contact with me. He points at me and says, okay, now you deal with him in his broken English. So he gets off of him and he walks past me. Now I don't know who the bad guy is, right? I'm in the middle of these two Spanish guys and... Uh, I'm trying to use what little Spanish I do know, which is basically cerveza por favor, right? So, I mean, it wasn't getting nowhere. And uh, I'm more concentrated on the bigger Spanish guy who could absolutely crush me and probably a little bit too concentrated on him. And out of the corner of my eye, I see something coming at me. I turn and I square off and the smaller Spanish guy is uh, bent over the waist and he's about to spear me and take me to the ground. I was able to square off just in time. I put him in a headlock and we fell to the ground. I was in two date, the worst fight for my life. I screamed at the bigger Spanish man to help. He threw his hands up and he walked out of the house. That, sus that suspect kicked and bit. He punched and spit like it was life or death on the line. I was finally able to get one hand cuffed and I had my other arm around his neck and for the first time I was able to get to my radio and I keyed up and I said something like this. I said, 55, 43, Marin, I need signal 55, 10, 18, I'm in a 22 pop. Radio silence. What I was saying is, 55, 43, Marin, I need signal 55, I need backup. I need them 10, 18 lights and sirens because I'm in a 22 pop, a physical altercation. I repeat, 55, 43, Marin, I need signal 55, 10, 18, I'm in a 22 pop. Finally, Valdez responded. Valdez was a Spanish-speaking deputy, a great deputy. He had a strong accent. He said, 2454 to Marion. I'm at 44 and 200 if there's not a closer unit. I thought to myself, oh God, please be a closer unit because I know where that intersection is and I know running lights and sirens with no traffic and perfect weather, you're looking at 15 minutes. And then I heard the very worst thing I could have heard. That's 10-4, you're going to be the closest unit right now. I knew my bad situation just got worse. At this point, we were covered in sweat and it was getting increasingly harder to hold on. I felt my arms slipping and I thought to myself, if I let go, if the suspect gets away, he's not trying to run, he's not trying to get away. He's going to kill me. If I give him the opportunity, he's going to kill me. I was finally able to get him to, in a position to where I could kind of relax and I was holding him there and as I felt him slip I started to do something kind of funny in hindsight never done this before 
Don't know what made me think to do this, but I believe it helped. I began to motivate myself. I didn't just think these thoughts. I vocalized them in an attempt to muster up any strength or energy I had to persevere. I started to scream at myself, don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give in. Valdez is on the way, don't you give up. Don't you give in. And over and over and over again, I screamed at myself. And I've come to think about it, maybe he was trying to get away because of that. And we thought, this guy's absolutely nuts, right? Who knows? And uh, about 12 minutes go by and I hear sirens. I know that the Calvary's on its way and I'm going to be okay. Within minutes, Valdez runs to the door. He rounds the corner and he screams, are you okay, brother? He reaches down, he gets the other handcuffed. He takes the suspect outside and puts him in the squad car. I laid on the living room floor, trying to catch my breath. I share that story with you, because right now, if you've made it this far, maybe you're dealing with something. There's a lot of people on YouTube, a lot of people on social media, and I know right now, one of you are going through a hard time, you're trying to hit a goal, you're trying to um, beat cancer or beat an illness, you're dealing with family issues, there's something that you're going through right now and you feel like giving up. You're trying to justify in your mind why it's okay to be average, why it's not okay to, or, or why it's okay to live average, why, it's, why you don't necessarily need to hit these goals or make that money or get that promotion. You're starting to justify because you feel yourself slipping. I wanna let you know right now that whatever you're going through, whatever you're trying to accomplish, whatever you're trying to do, that if you hold on, motivate yourself, scream at yourself if you need to, if you hold on, your Valdez is gonna run through the door. And when he does, everything's gonna be worth it. You're gonna be happy that you held on. You're gonna be happy that you persevered. You're gonna be happy that you didn't give up. Because this is your life. If you don't make a count, what is there? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and share this video if you felt like you got value out of it. Thank you guys, have a good day. Oh, no.